Good morning, listeners, and welcome back to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ron Cooming of RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs much like you achieve even greater success by attracting, converting, and retaining your ideal customers and clients using various internet marketing techniques and methods. The purpose of this show most weeks is I'll bring on a couple, one or two subject matter experts, interview them, uh, people who have been there and done that uh, in fields that some or most of our listeners might be in or consider going in or could learn from. Remember, there's a huge difference between seeking advice and opinion and counsel. If you are really trying to get serious in business, you need to seek counsel and mentors. And the difference between those and people who give you advice or coaches or stuff is these are people who have actually been there and done that. You know, so, uh, you know, for me as an individual, I mean, you're free to put your money wherever you want. I want to learn from people who have been there and done that in the fields that I'm going into or a similar field. Uh, so I can, uh, you know, increase my probability of success and cut out some of the pitfalls. So that's what we do. We'll bring those on um, usually one or two a week. Uh, last week I did three episodes, about 20 minutes each, where I just gave out pure content to beginning of the year. And uh, I got out several calls where people really liked that. The interviews they liked too, but, you know, these were actionable tips on what they needed and what they could do to... Uh, increase their success in life and I just want to let you know this episode all episodes those three episodes are all up or will all be up on my website rcsonlinesolutions.com as well as the radio station's website 980 WCAP uh, in based out of Lowell.com and um so you can go back and listen and if for some reason you're listening today for the first time I have probably 500 videos up on Uh, YouTube that you can go listen to. But today I want to talk to you about how to generate more engagement with your business to business content. Uh, In the first segment I talked, I started talking about this and then I went really deep into uh, Facebook and different social medias and their algorithms and how you can work those algorithms themselves to increase your engagement, to increase the probability that somebody will actually see your content and your material. And, you know, awareness equals opportunity, right? And that's what I love to tell people. We have video promotions where we get people ranked on the first page of uh, the search engines before we even pay them because there's just so many people out there that, you know, charge you crazy money and promise you the moon and just don't deliver. Every industry has those type of people. So what I like to do is I know that we're that good that uh, I don't have to worry about it. I know I can get almost anybody. If not, I I haven't had a a failed client yet where I can get them on the first page of uh, Google, uh, YouTube, uh, Yahoo, and or Bing, one or more of them, for one or more of their keywords, uh, you know, within, you know, a couple of weeks. Pure white hat uh, tactics, no scammy, spammy stuff. uh, And anyhow, so... So that's, you know, you want to basically, uh, and I, but that's my big tagline is awareness equals opportunity. The more people that are aware of you, the more people that can consider you and then possibly hire you. If you're on page two of the search engines, no one's going to really see you. Page three, you don't even exist. Same with social media platforms. If you have a thousand followers and you're not paying to boost those posts, chances are, from what I've read, is that three to five, four to six percent. So let's just say five for the sake of uh, this example. Uh, last section I, I use six, so today this section I'll use five. So if you have 10,000 followers, that means that whatever platform you're on that uses that algorithm will choose 500 of those and, and put your post to 500 of those. Now your feed changes every four to five hours or so, right? I think Facebook is every four hours, Twitter's every two hours. So if they're not in front of their uh, computer or tablet or smartphone at that time on that social media platform, even those 500 aren't going to see you, right? That's if you're not boosting them. So earlier, the first segment, go back and listen because I talked about how you could, you know, substantially, I gave you a couple really good ninja moves too on how you could substantially uh, increase your engagement uh, with, 
uh, with a couple of tactics I gave in the first section. But today I'm going to do this section. I'm going to talk a little bit more broader. Okay. Um, so these days, even more, and I've written some stuff, and I'm, I'm going to ad lib as I go. So I'm going to read a little and then ad lib as I go. Okay. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget some important stuff. Okay. So uh, sometimes I can, you know, the ADD kicks in, the geek starts coming out, and I get a little too technical, and I forget that I just want to let you guys know certain things that you can do that, uh, you know, a lot of times you really don't care about the background algorithms and codes and all that crap. You just want to know what to do to, to get ahead, right? So uh, that's why I write stuff to keep me on track. So we're going to talk about how to engage, how to generate more engagement with your B2B content these days. More than ever, engagement is key to digital marketing algorithms. Rewarding engagement and interactions with audiences are more likely to see and respond to content based on engagement. If you're not generating a level of interaction, you're limiting your potential in a range of ways, especially on social media. I mean, it is called social media for a reason, right? So organizational goals for uh there was a survey done, and it says that these pe these companies here, right, according to CMI report, 71% of B2B companies say that their main focus of their content marketing efforts is to generate engagement. All right, and here is here's some key statistics. 80% said lead generation was their goal. The next 79 was brand awareness. 71 was engagement. Uh, 66 was lead, lead nurturing. 62 was sales. 56 was customer retention and loyalty related programs. And number 52 was building an audience VA subscription growth, uh, which is huge. I mean, you know, that's, that's each one of those I could go into whole segments on but uh, i want to try to stay focused and, and please understand that your marketing and your sales are two different things so if you hire somebody to do your marketing you're responsible to close them you know like say you hire me to get you on the first page of the search engines i will but you got to close them you know you got to have a product that somebody wants and then when they pick up the phone or they send you an email or they hit your website, you know, whatever it is that they find or whoever they speak to has to have the ability to generate enough interest to express the value of that product and service to that person to, to be able to serve them and, and sign them to a contract. So that's that part is sales. So don't confuse marketing and sales. Yeah, I got on the first page and it didn't get me any leads. Well, if you got on the first page, you're one of the chosen fruit, uh, few, and you definitely got leads. You didn't close the leads because you didn't do your sales properly. But now if you hire somebody to do marketing and you don't get on the first page and you don't get leads, then they definitely failed. But if they did your job and you didn't close them, you know, just, just keep, it, keep it straight, okay? So let's talk about number one would be email marketing. Email marketing is still the undisputed king of B2B content and can help you generate huge engagement opportunities for B2B companies. You can boost engagement by sending different emails at different stages of your email marketing campaigns. However, if you send the same email template, it might not help you much in generating engagement from your content. In order to maximize your email efforts, you need to make sure that you send a welcome email w when a new user subscribes to your service and to capitalize on that attention. Ensure that you send weekly curated email content to your subscribers. Now, via your email content, you can also share new updates or announcement with your subscribers and uh, different things like that. So, But let me talk a little bit about that before I move on to the next one. Uh, if you're sending emails to somebody, let's say you have on your website or wherever, and somebody signs up for an email, right, or signs up for your newsletter, you want to have it automated in the background. And I, you know, I can't believe most people don't already, but you want to make sure that you have automated in the background so people can, uh, they'll just get a letter. Thank you so much for subscribing. We look, a lot of people will have the second opt-in. They'll send, uh, you know, did you want to subscribe? Click here to confirm your email address. That's great. But you also want to have the next one. Thank you so much for subscribing. We hope that, uh, we hope, you know, we hope that you'll enjoy our content to ensure that we are providing you and others with the content that you truly 
desire, you know, we have a little survey below. Please let us know what is uh, most of most interest to you. What would you like to most hear or something like that? Because right off the bat, whatever it was, it sparked their interest. Then they confirmed their email and then poof, a minute later, they get something that says, thank you very much. And now you want to know how better to serve them. All right. You're giving. That's attraction marketing. You're giving them more content uh, up front. Right. You're, you're, you're attracting them. You're not selling them. So now in that one, then you give them like a three question survey or you just create a box. You know what content is most important to you and then just let them fill that information out. And then when they click it, it goes somewhere and someone on your team will enter it via the database or you could actually just have like a, a box with buttons and then somebody can check a button and say you know they're interested in online marketing or they're interested in uh, email marketing or they're interested in uh, you know educational information or whatever the case may be right whatever your industry is related to your emails uh, and that might make it even simpler because then you but once they do let's say they check three boxes when they check that box Behind the scenes, now the geeks kind of come out a little bit, right? But behind the scenes, there is a tagging system. So now when they come in and they hit that digital marketing and they hit the email, they're going into two separate categories. They're going into the email marketing category, and then they're going to go into the digital marketing category. So every email that you send out on emails, you're, when you're sending it out and you're setting up your email, you're going to make sure that you tag everybody you use the tag that you set up for everybody who clicked that, right, that option that creates the tag. And then when you uh, create your email, you make sure that it, that tag is included, if not solely. I mean, if somebody's interested in something, you don't want to send them emails of stuff they're not interested in, right? So, uh, so, but this way here, you know, all this stuff can be automated in the background. So you set it up one time and then it just works for you forever. But uh, definitely do that. That's huge. And, and I, I want to move on because the geek's starting to come out, right? So number two is collaborate with influencers. This is huge. Today it's so important. I can't tell you how many people I see on Instagram, right? Uh, I got a couple of friends, and they literally, I have one that has 558,000 followers, right? And, and you know, she's, she's young, she's beautiful, and oftentimes, almost all the time, she's in a string bikini, and she'll be holding a drink that she is being paid to uh, promote. But one time, she actually had a book in her hand, and she says, I'm reading a book. And, uh, you know, I'm reading this or that. And, you know, uh, you know, what's your favorite book? And, you know, I can't believe how many people just wrote in and said things like, oh, is there a book in the picture and stuff like that. So, you know, be careful with the image you're putting out there. But the flip side of that, too, is uh, when you're... Uh, collaborating with these influencers, make sure that influencer is right for you. Because now in that example, the type of people that are following her are probably not business people. There might be some young girls who look up to her if she's given out some type of like exercise advice somewhere, right? But it's probably, you know, guys who just don't have, you know, good intent, right? They're just looking at her for being an object, not as being a human being. So paying her to do some marketing for you may or may not be your best choice whereas if you have someone else like I don't I, I guess it's okay to give people's names right like Jillian Michaels I mean she is a rock star when it comes to nutritional stuff she used to be on a, a TV show called uh, Greatest Loser or something like that and I actually saw her live she was amazing I really like her but now if you had something that was health related or even exercise clothes. Let's say you had some new swim, or not swim, but sweatpants or something, or a design that you wanted to come out with. If if you could make a deal with someone like her, uh, that she found that it had value, it didn't tarnish her image, or whatever the case may be, um, and you could, you know, promote through her, that would just really skyrocket you because it's you're leveraging their relationships, right? They have built a relationship over time with people on a specific subject matter and now you're just being injected and that's called transference of trust and there's a whole bunch of you know NLP and all this other stuff I can give you behind the scenes but the bottom line is they know her like her and trust her and then when she says that this is a good pair of sweatpants or this is a, a good type of tea or something uh, 
you know, people are going to pay attention much more than if I had said that, right? So collaborate with influencers. You can drive higher engagement rates if you can collaborate with influencers. Influencers are authority figures that are generally experts in creating content that drives higher engagement. You might have some sincere fans and followers who love your brand, but they might not be willing to spend their money on your products or services unless they know how well they work. Potential customers often look for an insurance, for assurance, that their services, that your services or products are worth investing in. So this is where an influencer can help because they have authority figures, you know, their authority uh, figures in that field, right, in that area. So when they say it's good, that's huge. If you go on my Facebook, you'll see me and my LinkedIn, but you'll see pictures of me with people like Neil Patel, arguably one of the best SEO people in the world, right? And uh, and I was with him in an event in Santa Monica last year, 800 people, right? And I was spe- I spoke there as well. Uh, Ty Lopez uh, pitch- pitches with me and him. Uh, the people I bring on this radio station, they're all experts. I I vet them myself. I don't, you know, somebody doesn't just say, Ron, can I be on? Nobody pays. Everybody's a guest to come on. Uh, The owner, Sam uh, of WCAP 980, he gives this radio stations free. I don't have to pay to be on here. I don't get paid to be on here either. I come over here. I give you guys the information. I try to help out. I bring on other people. But make no mistake about it. When I have Kevin Harrington on, one of the original Shock Tank members, he's been a guest. Um, when he comes on, that elevates my status. All his fans who are going to tune in and listen to me are going to hear me and what I do and also understand that he respected me enough to come on and that is a little bit of a transference of trust. Now, if he went out and said, you know, this guy or that girl or whoever is the best at whatever they do, that would even be more. But uh, I've had like seven billionaires on here, some really, really successful people, and that elevates my brand. So, you know, being on this radio show, even though I don't get paid, my, in the last, you know, two and a half years that I've been doing it, I've had, you know, I don't know if you guys know Robert Kiyosaki, but the original writer of that, or we'll say co-writer, uh, was Sharon Lecter. She has 21 New York Times bestsellers, right? I mean, she's just amazing. And uh, she's been on this show, and she's a friend. I get pitches with all these people, and like I said earlier, I'll be speaking in front of 2,000 people uh, in uh, February um, and then going to the Academy Awards, a big gala, right, uh, on the 24th, right? So I wouldn't have gotten there, you know what I mean, if, if people didn't... Uh, if I didn't get to know people. So that that's what you that's the whole point of being with collaborating with influencers. You 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 gotta give value first, whether it's to a client or to somebody of status, right? They gotta see that you're for real and that you're not a taker. You know what I mean? So I, I try to keep this show about internet marketing and how you can grow your business online. But understand that actually scaling your business and growing your business it, there is so much more to it than just putting your information out there and waiting for somebody to show up. You know what I mean? Uh, eventually, you, you, you've you got to invest time, effort, money. Uh, you know, I, I said earlier too, and I'll say it again, when you get these people and you see them on stage and, and they're crushing it or, or, you know, you see them on TV or on the Internet and, you know, they got all the fancy cars and the fancy girls and they're always on the beach somewhere, right? You know, that's 5, 10, 15. 15 years later, and some of that might not be true either. Some of that could just be acting, right? But most of them are, are legit. You know, you got a couple charlatans out there. But when you get on that level, uh, you know, there's no reason to be a charlatan, right? Uh, so, I mean, I spend four or five months a year on the beach myself because I have a laptop lifestyle. And I'll send pitches from the beach, and oftentimes I'm not alone. But, um, But I send that because I want people to understand that if I can do it, you can do it. You know what I mean? You don't have to be stuck in an office. You have options, you know. Uh, You've got to take action. You've got to learn things. You've got to add value to the marketplace. No one's going to give you anything, nor should they. But um, so... I just, you know, that's anyhow, I'm, I'm get coming off a little bit here. I'm getting into like business growth and because a lot of business growth is about um, mental 
It's mental and it's emotional. You've got to learn what you need to do to scale mentally and emotionally. Uh, I highly recommend, there's a guy named Jim Rohn, right? R-O-H-N. He's passed now. But on YouTube, you can listen to some of his videos. I do. I start my day every day just about... um, Seven days a week, I listen, because when you wake up in the morning, your first 10 minutes, or your first uh, 20 minutes, rather, your brain is operating at 10.5 wave cycles, you know, more than normal, right? So at that first 20 minutes, the input, whatever you're putting in, has so much more uh, value and stick so much more than the rest of the day. So I suggest instead of putting on the news and, you know, listening to all the insanity that's going on out there, right? Um, you know, get the weather the night before. You don't have to get it in the morning, right? So if well, I got to get the weather, no, get the weather the night before. You know, don't tell me what you can't do. Tell me what you can do. And again, it's all about small steps, small steps over time, right? So, uh, so listen to Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, for your first 20 minutes a day. He has videos on there. You know, some are three minutes, seven minutes, 15 minutes. He's got a couple on there for like an hour and a half. And one thing he did for three hours. But, you know, listen to him when you're driving in a car. You know, when you're driving to and from. Even if it's a, an hour long one and you got a 20 minute ride. 20 minutes one way, 20 minutes back, finish it the next day, right? Whatever the case may be. But, um, and you don't have to listen to it just the first 20 minutes. If for some reason you can't, any time of day. But Jim Rohn is great. Uh, also, uh, Les Brown, love him. I'm going to be on the stage with him next month, I can't tell you. Uh, in addition to speaking in front of 22,000 people, uh, being on the stage with Les Brown is huge for me because I'm a big fan of his. If you don't know him, Go to YouTube and listen to a couple of his videos. He's amazing. Uh, But these are the type of things you do, and they don't cost you anything. You know, it's free. You know, turn off the TV. Stop playing video games. If you do, uh, everybody has a life. Everybody has business, uh, you know, business things to do. But at the end of the day, I have 24 hours just like you, just like Warren Buffett. You know what I mean? Just like, uh, you know... Elon Musk or uh, Bill Gates, you know, we all got the same amount of time, but it's how we choose to use that time, who we choose to associate with, right? So, uh, uh, so I just want to let you know that, you know, it, it, being successful in business is a whole lot more than just getting your products out in front of people. And uh, I, I went to a networking event the other night, and I can't tell you, man, p- you know, people just come up to you and start puking on you about their services, you know. Build a little bit of rapport with somebody. Talk to them a little bit and then tell them what you do. But when you tell them what you, they do, you know, just give them a little bite. See if they're interested uh, instead of puking on them. But anyhow, so collaborating with influencers, we covered. Let's move on to humanizing your brand. Uh, we got about nine minutes left. And uh, if uh, that's cool, I'm just going to go straight to the end. Eight minutes, four minutes, three minutes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, for another six minutes. And uh, then they're going to run the rest of the commercials. I'm only going to do two uh, segments today instead of three. Uh, I got... um I got a little distracted. Sorry, guys. Uh, Humanize your brand. Regardless of whether you manage a B2B, a B2C brand, or a B2B brand, you're selling your services and products to people. And as such, it's important that you connect with potential customers on a personal level. You know, I like to tell people, be real, raw, and relatable. One of the most effective ways to engage your prospects is to humanize your brand and create a story around it. Storytelling can be highly effective effective tactic which can help you build connections on a more personal level. Storytelling also enables you to better connect with your potential customers. One thing you'll find whenever you go, if you go to these big events like the ones that I speak at and and attend, I I go to events and attend too, uh, to learn, to listen, and I'm going to lie for a second here, everyone in that audience is a potential customer and client, right? So you got to put yourself in the room. So anyhow, so uh, storytelling, you'll hear people tell you about that. That's huge. So sometimes, but you'll always hear them, you know, when you hear somebody up on the stage, and this is a joke, but it's pretty close, right? You'll hear somebody say, like, if they're 
selling a real estate course, and this is any industry. I'm not picking on real estate people, right? Just using this as an example. Uh, he was homeless, hungry, living under a bridge, uh, was walking out from underneath the bridge. A book fell on his head. He had nothing else to do. He figured, heck, I might as well read the book. He read the book, and uh, it gave him an idea. He went out, uh, got, a, got you know, somehow got his first piece of property, flipped it, did it a second time, did it a third time, and uh, somebody said to him, oh, but you're, uh, you know, you're lucky, you're the only, you know, you're unique, nobody else could do that, and he said to himself that, hey, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So he set about to, you know, teach the world to give them a better life because, you know, I was there, I am here, and the transformation was the cost, you know, was what I learned, and that's the course he's selling. And you'll always see that. They call that like a blinky story and uh, or something similar to that, a hero's journey or the blinky story. And uh, so um, so keep your eye out for that when you hear about that. And um, that's the music coming on. But you'll hear that's like your storytelling uh, with your brand. So you want to, uh, to get some stories injected in there and talk about your successes. I had a client who saved, if you're selling electricity, I had a client who saved, you know, $37 a month on electricity. Uh, you know, at the end of the year, that's, an, that's a car payment, right? So they lower their car payments by the end of the year, whatever it is. But uh, so those three quick ways, humanize your brand, um, collaborate with influencers and email marketing next week i'll talk about more and try not to get so distracted guys you've been listening to the internet marketing and business solutions radio show with ron cooming of rcs online solutions where we help business owners and entrepreneurs much like yourself attract convert and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success see you next week